didn't we just review the Vibe 7 a month ago? Hmm. Greetings and welcome to SmartwatchTix.com. Here we've got the Vibe 7 Pro, supposed upgrade to the original Vibe 7. Some information on the back for you. What's the big deal? What's the big difference? A couple of things. On the good side, you've got an AMOLED screen. We all love those nice AMOLED screens, bright, clear, strong blacks, and always on screen display. On the not so good, They've switched us from DeFit on the Vibe 7 to FitCloud Pro as the tethering app. Why should that matter, you say? None of the other reviews I watch on these watches even talk about the tethering app. What's up? You're about to see. The uh, watch itself is beautiful. Look at this. It's like titanium with the start and back button. You've got your speaker here because it's Bluetooth calling, of course, waterproof, everything. Sensors in the back and... You can pick it up directly from the Z-Blaze official store off of AliExpress for a decent price. Well under 50 bucks. Might even get it down as low as 40 Check the show notes for the link and uh, coupon discounts that I may have for you. All in all, it's a very nice watch, but the app. Mm. Okay. 1.43 inch AMOLED display, hi-fi Bluetooth phone calls, and it is a crisp, clear, nice speaker and military grade uh, toughness on this one. You're looking at, uh, like I said, AMOLED, always on screen modes, 466 by 466 pixel with a 391 PPI. Remember when Apple was hyping their retina stuff? Now we're so, we're so fine in the detail that retinas can't even begin to see what the differences are. You got a wrist sensor, a rate monitor, pulse oximeter, all these things are on there accelerometers a 400 milliamp hour battery looking it up to 30 days uh in battery saver mode and 14 days of regular usage heavy usage seven days all right that's a whole week before you need to charge again continuous voice calling if you were like mr tix and could talk forever you could go 485 minutes and about an hour and a half charging three atm waterproof that's 30 meters ip69 Pretty much standard. Some are five. Nonetheless, it's definitely waterproof. You have swimming as a mode on here. Voice calling features on this one. Um, different themes. Clock. You can set date and time and do automatic daylight savings time on it. Got stopwatch, timer, alarm, all the different health monitoring things. There are some issues with the health monitoring, and they happen to relate to both the watch and the app. Mm-mm. Okay, you got ladies, um, women's health information in this one. Your daily smart features include different kind of text notifications. There's weather, music, onboard camera for remote shutter, do not disturb, and so forth. Uh, activity trackings include uh, your step count and all of those things. Uh, you can do a display on after a period of inactivity and walking for a couple of minutes will reset that whole thing. It's kind of interesting with this new AMOLED display. Uh, Real-time pace and distance. 100 plus different um, watch faces that you can sync from the app. The uh, analog or digital always on display and we'll show you those. It's a really unique implementation of the digital one on this one. You're going to be interesting and see that one. Uh, analog is great. It's just your standard hands and very low power. Basic sports modes are here. And the more detailed uh, ones of different fitness activities are in the FitCloud Pro app that supposedly you could bring in and use as well. You've got different languages supported here. Um, again, FitCloud Pro, not my favorite. Zinc alloy um, with all the other stainless steel buckle on the, the bands, the wristband material, measurements, guys. They've done a really good job of giving us extensive information. And I'm going to give you a really good look at the watch. That's the module itself. Deeper into the box, we get a bag of band. There you go. The bands are actually shipped in a nice bag here. And, of course, they're quick-release style with a special, as you can see, I'll get them out in a minute, a special uh, way they attach that makes the bands wider than the 22 millimeter uh, slot that they fit in. 
You also have the charging cord, which is a two-pin, slightly wider than normal connector on the back. If you got a bunch of watches, you want to keep these wires separate uh, between each of them. Magnetically coupled, not quite strong enough to hold the watch. It's a bit heavy because of all of the metal in it, but it does a good job. And then, of course, we've got the manual, and this is a crazy manual. Um, geez, I'm not sure how I'll show it to you. We'll do our best. There's English. Looks like there's different languages across, uh, going across. So we'll freeze frame that for you. Uh, again, there's the uh, QR code to download the app, but I recommend you go to the Google Play Store to make sure you pick it up directly. Here uh, is a little bit more information. Wow, okay, we're into different languages, perhaps. Yeah. And now we're back to the QR code. So I think it's just a really short manual, two pages, with a bunch of different languages supported for international. All right, let's take a look at it. The bands fit nicely on the watch, and we've got two buttons, the top one being the start button. Press and hold, give it a moment, a little longer. There you go, coming up with Z-Blaze, their company logo, as it launches into its home watch face. There was no vibration, by the way, that I felt. Sometimes you get a little vibration so you can tell that you've started it without having to look at it. We are here. When I swipe down, I get a circular uh, interface that shows you all kinds of things, starting with overall AMOLED brightness, super bright. Really easy to see outdoors, and a nice soft gentle for uh, evening time if you want to, or indoors. You've got a uh, power saving mode that will disconnect it from um, Bluetooth and turn it into low power, basically um, soft screen. you got an overall do not disturb that can assist you with the turning off twist your wrist to see the time and so forth. This is lit up because I am Bluetooth tethered to the phone for making phone calls. You can literally turn it on and off if you want the watch to function that way right from the watch, which is great. You got a really nice bright flashlight uh, in this one. Information tells you it's the Vibe 7 Pro. And this is... That's my phone ringing, guys. Uh, it'll find your phone for you. And those are all of the little connectors that show you what where you're connected, your battery level, and your power. Okay, come over this way now, and we're going to get into all of our different apps, and we'll take a look at those in a moment. Coming up, you get into any messages pushed to you from your phone, and this way, we've got your step count information, including calories burned and distance traveled, and a 24-hour chart showing your steps by hour. That's really nice. Also, the seven-day uh, collection of steps. I've been doing this one since January 4th, so I've got some nice steps on here and an average over that time period. All in the watch. Usually, you got to get it from the app. And actually, you can't get it from the app. you got to get it from the watch because the app is really, really limited. Come over here, you're getting heart rate with green diode technology. I could press my finger on it. It'll trigger and it'll go in and do a heart rate for you. It'll show you the last 24 hour heart rate here and uh, your zone that you're in uh, currently and your average heart rate over the last 24 hours. Again, really nice on the watch. Not so much, you'll see uh, when we get to the app. Last night's sleep time is here. You've got hours and minutes of deep and light and total. And you've got the seven-day sleeping average. And you can see by the change in tone of the color, the deep and the light. Uncle Tick spends a lot of time in light sleep, I think. Uh, we've got weather in your area, no forecast, Fahrenheit centigrade. And I believe you can actually set the location on this one. Um, and then you got a, an onboard music player that ties, of course, into the phone itself. How about an example of what music sounds like playing on the watch? Here you go. Now, it's speakers here. So if you want to silence it, well, you can't silence it completely, but partially by covering it when it's on your arm. Yeah, it's a little difficult to get to, so... You have to silence it by touching the buttons, but good and loud speaker on this one. Hello! Whew! 
Yeah, definitely loud. Back into watch faces. We've got three, four of them. Here's a, a different white one. You can see the edge-to-edge -edge capability of it, and it's really nice AMOLED uh, quality on these. Uh, very, very good detail. This is one I like. You really got everything you need on here. In fact, you've got active buttons for your music player and your text messages sent from the phone. There are others that you can put on here and too and download from the app that have some active buttons on it. Not a lot, but a few. And of course, you got your uh, heart rate and calories burned and time and all sorts of things. So few watch faces available. Now, let's finally get over here. You got telephone, contacts, call records, and voice assistant. They're all tied in with being Bluetooth to your phone. No SIM card in this one, but you can do all of that stuff uh, as long as you're close to your phone, right? You got the data we already looked at. You've got workouts from walking, running, treadmill. We saw that in the list of available activities. And then, of course, there's some extra ones from the app. Theoretically, you can add to it. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, oh, interesting. Look at that. We got a curve thing going now. Huh, okay. Workout records, heart rate, uh, we saw sleep time. We saw all of that stuff too. Blood oxygen is here. And um, it uses the red diode technology to get your blood oxygen reading. Messages sent from your phone and weather. Here's the... Uh, Wow, where did it go? The female uh, record activity tells you where you are in your cycle, ladies, when you set that up in the app and uh, how long it is until um, other things begin. Wow, music player we did. Breath training is simple. Inhale, exhale for one or two minutes is in this one. You've got an onboard stopwatch, nice and bright. And you can't leave it when it's running. And if you try to leave it, you can just pause it. So it doesn't uh, really run in the background on this one. Alarm clocks. You can literally set the time and uh, 24 or 12 hour uh, format from here if you want to directly in the watch. So if you're really not into the app, you don't need the app with this one. A lot of them, you got to do certain things in the app tethered to the phone and or tethered to your watch to make it work. But Looks like just about everything. It's an independent watch, which is great because really you're not going to do a lot with the app with this one. Find your phone and then overall settings, the menu style. We're doing a, a linear one, but you can have bubbles and circles and things. Um, display. This is where it gets fun. We showed you the watch faces and the overall brightness already. Screen time is where you can set how long it will go before it times out. But actually, I want to set it for five seconds because I want to show you the always on display clock. We're going to go analog first. I'm going to come back here. We're going to give it five seconds. It will time out on this watch face. Ta-da! There you go. Uh, that's all there is. And of course, when you twist it a little bit, it's going to light back up again. And when it times out based on what your setting was, it'll go back into that uh, always on ambient mode. But wait, there's more. I want to show you. Now come back to me. Now it doesn't want to come back. Okay. I want to show you uh, the other one, which was, how do I get there? Going to go into settings, go into display, go into AOD, and we're going to switch it to digital. And I want you to see what the digital uh, watch looks like. It can also get to it right here. Look at that. It's soft. It's subtle. There's the time. Here is your, are your calories and your step count and your heart rate. And your date is on the side. And it's really low power. Uh, not easily seeable during the daylight hours at all. I like the analog one outdoors in the day because you can glance and see the hand so you know what the time is. But this is great for at night. Uh, but you do have this particular digital display as well over whatever your watch face is. And it'll trigger, of course, when there's a timeout. So that's going on in the settings uh, in the display, you have a battery savings mode, tells you your current power level, and then you can go into that. It's going to turn off that always on display and run your battery or run the screen uh, very low brightness, extend the battery life a lot. You got vibration intensity, the different languages in here, and that was covered in the app I or in the uh, intro when we looked at the different languages on the uh, specs. Not a lot for this particular watch. The overall QR code, you can skip that whole thing for bearing. Um, 
set the time again, and then system is where you get your system info, which we already saw. You also have uh, shut down, restart, and completely reset the watch if you want to. Now, are you ready for that awesome, amazing FitCloud Pro? Here you go. I was happy to see that the original Vibe 7 used the DeFit app, but boy, very disappointed with FitCloud Pro. Whenever I see this one, I'm not, well, I'm just going to show it to you. You, I don't want to put an interpretation on you. It's syncing right now because they're paired. And there's my overall step count. I can go into that. And just like you saw on the watch, there's my steps for the day. Let me show you yesterday. I can't. There's no way to go yesterday. I can send this out by email or something. I can show you weekly. There's yesterday and the day before. Now, if I want to show you the breakdown by hour, sorry, can't do it. The Fit and all the other apps let you go. You have a calendar thing, and you can go back to any day you want to to see what your totals are. But this just gives you a cumulative week or month total. Here's when I was using this with a different watch a long time ago. Um, and then the blank spaces in between. But I don't have a way to show anything other than today. So tomorrow, unless I look at it late tonight, I won't have any idea what I did today. That's for overall steps. Um, we'll get back to the women's thing. Come into sleep. Here's uh, You can touch on any of these and show you the time that you were in awake, light, or deep sleep. That's kind of cool. Your summary of everything. But again, that's just for last night. I can't show you the night before last, although I can show you a little bit about it, the total number of hours in bed. Um, but my average deep, light, and awake information is pretty much lost after today. So you have sleep. You have step count. You have heart rate. And here we go. I've got every single day. Why don't I have it on the others? I don't know. But here's uh, where we are so far today. And I've had the watch off doing the review. So it's flatline. And then I had it on uh, and it's showing, you know, various uh, values as it's taking it every cycle. And I've set it for 10 minutes, I believe, every 10 minutes. And look, I can go back and I can show you yesterday, times it was off and charging, um, times it was on. Um, and a day before that. So all of the flexibility of your continuous heart rate is here. And you can send that out here. Um, and of course, you can go into any day you want to. Uh, and start it remotely, too, for the heart rate. That's sweet. Blood oxygen? No! Don't have anything. I have no data. If I test it and hit start, it will give me a number. But it won't record it. If I do uh, the blood oxygen from the watch, it will show it, but it won't record it and transfer it. This is a one-time pony that you either initiate from the app in the phone or from the watch directly, but you cannot study your last night to see if you had any dips that might be indicative of sleep apnea. We've talked about that in other reviews where it's great to have blood oxygen readings through the night. A lot of things like these uh, fancy watch, uh, rings, they'll do overnight blood oxygen reading and give you an assessment in the morning of... Um, all kinds of things based on blood oxygen. Not so here. You've got a one-time reading, and that's it. Mm, mm. Health measurement, you press that, it'll do all of this stuff. Well, it'll do heart rate and blood oxygen. It doesn't change your sleeping or the ladies' menstrual stuff. But you can hit that health management, and it just does those. Why not uh, anything else, like if it did blood pressure or stress or any of those Ah, go see the DeFit app. It does all that stuff on that one with the Vibe 7. Mm. But it doesn't have the AMOLED screen with this really nice always-on uh, capability. Why they switched to this app is beyond me because it's one of the worst on the market. I'm being honest with you guys. Push notifications you can set up so you'll get you know your phone call notifications or text messages or any other apps on your phone. This is where you activate them to push the information to the watch and you can read it there. You can have um, reminders uh, for inactivity or drinking. These are just cyclical time alarms, basically. Weather reports can be turned on or off. Twist your wrist to see the time. You can set an elevated heart rate measurement and put in the value that you want that matches you. Wrists, uh, preferences, 12, 24 hours, uh, the version, 
uh, all those things. You can unbind it if you want to as well. And finally, the dial library. This is where you can get into all the different, they said over a hundred different watch faces. Uh, there's a lot of them, and they're really nicely done. Very uh, elegant faces, uh, from my estimation. They're not just cartoon characters with the same digital time that a lot of the watch companies promote as a large volume of watch faces without quality. These all have really nice quality. So if you're looking to download something on this watch with that AMOLED screen, mm, you're looking at some good stuff. It does not carry with it now the always-off kind of complementary one like we see in the uh, Wear OS watch faces and watches. It will always be just the analog or digital watch I showed you, but your main one when it's lit up will be one of these that you choose to add to it. I've brought in these so far. Once you download them, they're on your phone. Makes it easier to add them and switch to them because only one will be on your uh, watch at a time. But you can juggle them and switch them at your leisure and that's you can even edit some of them as well. And that's pretty much it for there. You can set up yourself and your ID or all the other things. I always register now as a female, so if it has period tracking, you'll be able to see that. Exercise goals and units, women's health. This is where you get into uh, your period information and you set all of that stuff up. You guys know what the you gals know what to do for all of that. Uh, basic settings, uh, version, account management. You can log out of your account completely, or you can just disconnect the watch if you want to unbind it and bind it to a different watch. And of course, you got your basic information, and that's it. All right, yeah. Check out a review of a, one of them that uses DeFit or some of the other apps, and you'll see a significant difference on capabilities. If you tap that, you get into a sporting thing that you can activate a sport with GPS from the phone, but you got to take the phone with you with your watch to do a running, walking, or hiking activity. But it will give you the, uh, the tracking stuff as well. So all in all, I really do like this watch. It's got great always-on display capability and a few really nice faces and a lot you can choose from on download. The body construction is excellent. The speaker is loud. Calling works well. The band is nice. As long as you're going to use it as a watch to do some basic stuff and you don't expect it to be a full-on fitness watch other than step count information um, with some limited heart rate uh, data that's continuous or instantaneous uh, and some sleep time information um, with weather yeah it's and 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 music playing uh, from your phone whatever you're playing on your phone podcasts or music in your library or whatever uh, you can do that with this one and have control over it so it's a good watch. It's just uh, the, the app that they're using to tether with to get your history is not there. It's a daily interpretation at the end of the day before it clicks over and starts a new uh, at midnight. If you can tolerate that and you want a really decent uh, AMOLED watch for a, a good price, this could be it. You can pick it up from the Z-Blaze official store. They're doing a world premiere release right now of the Vibe 7 Pro, follow up to the original Vibe 7. Um, and that's an excellent watch in and of itself with more capabilities given it's using the DeFit app. Alrighty guys, I know, more and more things to have to think about. Now you got to think about the app as well as everything else the watch does. But that's, that's the way it is. Alrighty, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.